Welcome to the Run True Diaries podcast. This is where we talk about managing your time in ways that helps you accomplish your running goals. Lace up to get your race up. Let's get moving. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody out there running on native land? And welcome to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast. I'm your host, Luis, aka Chico, and this is season two, episode four, making it broadcast number 14. Thank you for spending some of your precious time listening to the show. I appreciate it. I'm definitely not going to waste it. Lace up to get your race up and let's get moving. We're at the starting line with this episode's guest, and she has an affable personality that gracefully broadcasts her confidence. She has a strength of presence that positively influences the people around her. From representing great running teams to doing amazing behind the scenes work within the running community, she makes being a dirtbag look cool. It is an honor to welcome to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast, Miss Kelsey Long. Let's go. Hi. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? Doing well. How are you? I am doing great. So welcome to the show, Kelsey. John Rome is an American entrepreneur, an author, and a motivational speaker. He once said, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you can't get more time. So that being said, let's stop wasting it and let's get started with the fast five. These are five rapid fire questions that'll give us some quick insight about you. Let's go with question number one. When it comes to running, do you prefer roads or trails? Trails, definitely. Number two, medals, buckles, or challenge coins? So I'm gonna have to say buckles because I don't have one yet. Not yet, you're gonna get one, I know <laughs> that though. Question number three, besides athletics, what is your favorite pastime? Um, so I recently got into, uh, well, I've always kind of knew how to sew, um, but sewing and beading, and I've made two ribbon skirts this year, so oh, I'm really wow. excited. And I have plans for more, but yeah, that that's what I like awesome. to do. <laughs> Question number four, what is some advice that you would give to your younger self? You know, after my first half and my first marathon, I kind of got in this mindset that like I can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and which is awesome, yeah. but that kind I felt like that kind of made me lazy and like I haven't PR'd since my first half and my second full marathon. Okay. Um, just because I was like I can do it. Yeah. So you're <laughs> so, ready to like, get back. Just, yeah, just like, you know, not letting myself, um, just, just continuing to challenge myself with those. There you go. Gotcha. And question number five, what is something positive happening in your life right now? Um, so I recently won an award at work, um, and I get to go to Indianapolis. What? <laughs> that is awesome. Tell us about the award. So um, my, uh, we use this computer software during the pandemic. We have to work from home. Yeah. So um, I didn't program it. I'm not a programmer or anything, but I made it as useful as possible so we could um, work from home and still maintain productivity. So oh, wow. uh, the company who created the software uh, asked us, you know, so these questions I answered and I won. <laughs> that is awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> that was the Fast Five. Thank you for those answers. Now, Kelsey, go ahead and give us your introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey, a.k.a. Long Come and Kelsey. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm Navajo, and my clans are Kiaani Nishlin, Klogobushish Chin, Kislachitni Deshache, Nakai Dana'a Deshanela. Um, that is awesome. I, yeah, so I basically just told you who my family was. Um, my mom's side, my dad's side, and my grandparents. Um, that's how we uh, introduce ourselves to each other. Okay. Hey, so let's jump right into this, and let's uh, start this convo by talking about the state that you call home, New Mexico. Yes. So give us some insight about your experience growing up here and how it led you to where you're currently at in life. Um, so my, my family has a ranch two hours west of Albuquerque and, uh, that's where I grew up. Uh, and I was there until middle school when my family relocated to Albuquerque. Okay. And so I was there through middle school and high school. Um, 
And most of my family is still there. My sister, extended family, you know, they, they all, that's home. So yeah. uh, love to go back. I still have my New Mexico phone number. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> um, but I went to school in New York and uh, followed a boy to California <laughs> and then eventually ended up in uh, Oklahoma because my parents were living here at the or lived in central Oklahoma. And okay. so uh, about 10 years ago, I followed them here and I've been in Oklahoma since I was in central Oklahoma moved down to Southeast Oklahoma. Okay. So what is your favorite thing about ABQ, uh, AKA Albuquerque for those who don't know? <laughs> um, just so many great memories, but, um, I guess my niece. <laughs> okay. And that, and they, they currently live there. Yeah, she lives there. My younger sister lives in New Mexico still, and she has two kids. Um, but, I think my my niece and I really bonded when she was younger. So, okay. um, you know, we always have fun when we get back together. Uh, you said younger sister is you have more than one sibling? Yes, I okay. have an older sister who lives in central Oklahoma, as well as a younger brother. He's the youngest and oh, okay. he also lives in central Oklahoma. So where do you fall into this scheme of uh, children there? I'm two. <laughs> you too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been to Albuquerque a few times, once for work and once for pleasure, and my first time ever being in New Mexico, um, I was it was for a fire, firefighting, and um, I made it onto the front page of the paper. Oh my goodness! <laughs> right, that was like way back in like two thousand four. Um, okay. Yeah, no, th that's when we had all the fires and yeah. my, my house was close to the river. <gasps> and so it was like there was a fire near the river and we had to evacuate. Oh, man, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, I don't know the exact area, but like, man, there were so many homes right in harm's way and everything. And yeah. so this was my first time being on a hotshot fire. I didn't know to the extent that we do these things. Mm -hmm. I totally thought all of this was, um, I thought they were messing with me, you know, Hey, yeah, we're just going to sleep out here. I'm like, nah, we're not, but yeah, yeah we were, <laughs> but, but it's funny that that picture that I just showed on the front page of the newspaper, it was my first time ever holding a chainsaw. And next thing you know, uh, I'm on the front page of, you know, the paper there. The other time I was in Albuquerque was for gathering of the nations. Oh Yeah. Have you ever been? I yeah, once I think maybe in high school. It's been a really long time, but yes, yeah. it was. It, even then, it was huge. Yeah, um, I've personally, for me, I've never got to ever hit the powwow trail, and um, I've always wanted to. But that being said, have you ever danced? No, I haven't. If you had the opportunity to dance, what style would you choose? Fancy shawl. <laughs> Fancy oh, my shawl, goodness. and is... you. And you can make your own shawl now. That's true. I could. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's so mesmerizing. Um, and I don't know if you know, but uh, Rising Hearts has a wellness program. And so there is someone who does a fancy shawl yoga workout. I've what? done it once. And it's really cool. That is awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. It, Rising Hearts, that is with Jordan Daniels? Yes. So, you know, we did ask her to come on the show, but, you know, this is when she was getting ready to, you know, have her child and everything. So we have mm -hmm. a little bit of scheduling conflicts and everything. We still plan to have her. So when she's ready, Jordan, if you're listening, we're waiting. She's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for me, uh, I used to grass dance when I was younger. Uh, of course, you know, growing up, you just kind of get away from things and that you wish you didn't once you're older. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, once I started getting older, uh, I started making a traditional dance outfit from, for myself. I'm about 85% done. I got the bustle done, the roach. There's all this stuff is pretty much done. I just stopped once I start getting into running so heavy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm really hoping that things come together and I can finish what I started very soon and yeah. get back to dancing and everything. So it's just hard down here in Texas because, you know, we don't have 
a, a large Native American population or a powwow yeah. in general. So maybe there is one out there. I just got to do some searching, you know. So <laughs> yeah, we have a little more in Oklahoma. Um, yeah. My parents love going to powwows. They're always there. I think probably even somewhere now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot here in Oklahoma. So speaking of our Native ways, do you have a favorite drum group? I don't. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't raised traditionally, so I don't, I don't have any of that, you know, I, I never didn't follow anyone. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I don't. Okay. So since you were not, uh, raised tra in a traditional sense, uh, as a, I guess, indigenous person, uh, let me ask you this question. What is your take on having an Indian as a mascot, uh, a high school mascot or sporting team? I don't think it's a good idea. Um, it's just, I feel like it is damaging to Native peoples, Indigenous peoples. Um, like I said, I wasn't raised traditionally. Um, and I believe that is because my mom was uh, in a boarding school when she was younger. And so she was raised by nuns and her okay. culture was forbidden. And I feel, and so I was raised in the Southern Baptist church. And um, so we didn't get to know uh, the culture part of it. Yes, we knew we're in Navajo. We yeah. knew some words because both of my parents speak fluently and they would like say, pass the salt. You know, so we yeah. knew something like that and okay. we knew who we were, but we just didn't know how to represent or present ourselves to the world as indigenous people because it, it felt like we weren't allowed to. Right. And so seeing that these uh, seeing that schools, um, sporting teams are using mass uh, indigenous mascots or um, doing that sort of thing. You know, they're, they say they're honoring, but I really don't feel like it's honoring someone right. if you are making fun of them. If you make a cartoon about them, that's not honor. Yeah. And what I really want, what I hope that my work does is empowers younger generations, especially my niece and nephews, to proudly be themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I, for the longest time, I was so ashamed of the way I looked, you know, I tried to stay out of the sun so I wouldn't get too dark. I constantly thought about getting a nose job because my nose was <laughs> too wide. I wouldn't wear dangly earrings because it just accentuated all of my native features. And that sucks. You know, yeah. I would hate for my niece to ever think that. Right. And I, I totally agree. You know, for me, this is a double edged sword. Of course, I love my Native American heritage. And I'm also a proponent of most academic systems. However, I know that non native schools with Indians as mascots are ignorant to the actual harm that they cause the indigenous population. And I truly believe that this is borderline willful ignorance, you know, meaning that they don't want to be informed because not knowing is benefiting them. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, personally, I would like to see the situation handled professionally and conclude without any incident. I'm positive that there's a way that both sides can come to some sort of mutual agreement that will allow us all to progress from this situation. You know, it's really a hard and difficult space to navigate, and it takes a lot of hard work. But to you and to all of those who are do, uh, putting in this work, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, a little bit earlier, we talked about drum groups. There's one drum group. Well, I mean, there's multiple drum groups that I listen to. But I have a favorite, and um, it's the Black Lodge Singers. And so they sing this song that always makes me cry. Uh, it's called the, the Flag and the Blackfoot Man. And so it starts with the flag song, which is the Blackfeet Nation's national anthem equivalent. And then it transitioned into this all out jam session. And when I'm listening to that, when I run, like I get this heartfelt emotion. And then like when it starts jamming out, like I feel like I'm like leading grand entry or something. <laughs> <laughs> But going back to uh, Albuquerque, uh, when I was researching you for this podcast, 
I could not spell Albuquerque for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was spelling it so wrong that spell check thought I was trying to spell either barbecue or <laughs> oblique. And so, <laughs> so that being said, I have this small challenge for you. Like I said, when I was Googling how to spell Albuquerque, I came across this uh, website that was headlined common misspelled words by fifth graders. <laughs> and that's where I learned to spell Albuquerque. And that's where I pulled these words from. So I'm going to say a word and then I'll <laughs> use it in a sentence. And then you go ahead and spell the word. Okay. Okay. So uh, the first word, Albuquerque. The show Breaking Bad was primarily filled in Albuquerque. Okay. I got this one. A L B U Q U E R Q U E. All right. I don't know why I thought I was going to get you on that one. <laughs> All right. Second word carburetor. The car needs a new carburetor. Okay. I don't use this word a lot, so I don't have practice. C A R B A R. A-T-O-R? Very, very close. Uh, it's U-R-E-T-O-R. -E I got that one wrong, too. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's just like one of those words that, like, it just doesn't... The way it looks on paper just doesn't come out the way it sounds. Yeah. Last word. Indigenous. Every day is a great day to be indigenous. I know that one. Capital I. There you go. <laughs> D-I-G, oh gosh, E-N-O-U-S. Yes, very <laughs> good. All right. So speaking of indigenous, I think that's a great word to end this portion of the conversation on. And I want to say that I think you're a great representative for all of us indigenous people. So before we get into this next topic, thank you for being you. So let's yeah. move on. Oh, you're welcome. So let's move on and talk education. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, you attended college in Ithaca, New York at Cornell University. Yes. Oh my God. For any listener that is an office fanatic, please, please, please bear <laughs> me your best Andy Bernard. Read it, did do. do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nard Dog. That was Kismet. Ever heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, now tell us about attending school at uh, Cornell. Um, so I was there for three years, and I, it was absolutely so different from where from New Mexico, from where I'd grown up. Like as basic as the scenery, like you going from a desert situation to yeah. places that is green year round is insane. It was absolutely beautiful. We had waterfalls on campus, um, massive buildings that were hundreds of years old, uh, just so, so much going on there and much more than I, you know, ever really even thought about. Um, I did a summer program before my freshman year, and so I got to see what was going on, okay. and I wasn't completely overwhelmed when classes started. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it was crazy. <laughs> what was your graduation year and your area of study? So I should have graduated in 20, uh, 2009, Okay. And my area was um, history with a concentration in the European Renaissance. Wow. <laughs> and now you are a legal clerk for the Choctaw Nation in Durant, Oklahoma. Durant, yes. So, um, like I said, I was supposed to graduate and I did not. I ended up uh, going to uh, San Francisco before and okay. just life happened. I never got back. Yeah. Um, but given, you know, my background, uh, and just being introduced into the legal field, uh, it made me qualified for this job with the Choctaw Nation where I, uh, so <laughs> little history, um, yeah. last year there was, uh, legislation, the McGirt decision okay. that said that the Choctaw Nation reservation was never disestablished. 
So that gave the Choctaw Nation criminal jurisdiction over tribal members within the ten and a half counties, the reservation. So what we needed to do prior to this being enacted was we needed to prepare because yeah. pro- because there was a tribal prosecutor's office before I got there, but it wasn't at the level that we needed it to be. Okay. So I had previously worked for the state and they brought me in and I used that knowledge that I had of pr- procedure to build this system so that we are able to keep up with the amount of cases that come in from uh, this McGirt decision. Oh, wow. And when you're at work, you like to jam out to show tunes and Lynn manuel Miranda songs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell me about this. Oh, well, that's all thanks to my coworker, Randy. She's one of my really good friends. Okay. And um, we Give... sit really close together. Give Randy a shout out real quick. Randy Villers, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Whoa, time out. Kelsey also leads the Prosecuties. These are annual awards for her office, inspired by the office. Prosecuties! How can I explain it? A war show she created started out with champagne flutes and then they moved up to cutie oranges in a personalized trophy cup. And now the Prosecutie Award for the assistant to the travel prosecutor goes to Kelsey Long! I love it! Diamond! <laughs> All right. She does so, it. so hit us with some of your favorite show tunes. Um, so one of them, and I think it's just a lot of people right now, but Randy constantly gets "We Don't Talk About Bruno" stuck in her head. Okay. So she's a singer, so she can sing it well, and she's so she gets that stuck in my head. And then yeah. I go back and I get um, songs from Hamilton stuck in her head, so we just <laughs> bounce back and forth. Do you have any of these show tunes on your personal running playlist? Um, yes. <laughs> Which one is your, do you have a go-to? So, if I'm running on the treadmill. Yeah. And this is mainly on the treadmill because I don't, when I'm out on the trail, I really don't wear headphones. Okay. Um, but when I'm on the treadmill, I always start the Hamilton soundtrack from the beginning. Wow. Because so you know just going through and it's just like it's nice because it starts really you know bouncy and you're like yeah yeah, gets you really pumped up (laughs) and then when you're like kind of further into it and they you have um you because i also like to sing to them well not really sing but like mouth out and (laughs) so i'm just like yeah you know (laughs) so i'm like in the beginning i'm really like i'm ready to rap yeah there you go (laughs) (laughs) and then you know later later on it's those those longer um slower sort of songs where like i can catch my breath and just like let draw those those notes out (laughs) yeah there you go so i have a uh, show tune on my personal running playlist and uh it is everything is awesome from the lego movie yes (laughs) (laughs) So you kind of uh, alluded to this a little bit earlier, but um, Disney music. Every Disney princess has her own I want song. Elsa has Let It Go. Moana has How Far I'll Go. Do you have a favorite Disney song? Yes. There are so many, actually. So that's why I need to give this a a really good thought. Okay. Mm, So... And I think this is just like my, also my personality, but, um, and it, it's Shang Li from Mulan. He's singing, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, I feel like that's my sort of, uh, I mean, it's, he's not a princess, but like. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just ready, like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, there you go. So what, I can't remember what year Frozen came out, but. At that time, my, my daughters, they were just all into it. And, um, of course, Elsa has Let It Go. I like the song. You know, it reminds me of my daughters, but I, I can't, like, get into it. But there's this, uh, this artist. His name is, I'm going to mess up his last name. His name is Leo Moracilioli. I, I, I messed that last name up. But he does covers and turns them into, like, metal music. And so... I listened to Let It Go by him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen a couple of those on TikTok and they're really cool. Right? Speaking of 
Disney music, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda. Manuel? He, Manuel. So he, um, I was looking over his song resume and he has written so many great pieces. Um, the Moana soundtrack, he's on there a few times with uh, mm -hmm. How Far I'll Go. Uh, Vivo, One of a Kind. Hamilton, wait for, he did lots on Hamilton. Pretty much the yeah. whole soundtrack. And yeah. of course, Encanto, we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> but through my daughters, like I didn't, I, I've, heard, I've heard all these songs before, but now I'm putting two and two together. Now I'm like, oh my God, that's the same guy? Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you so into music? Well, I mean, I didn't start out as, out as an athlete. I played music when I was younger. Okay. I, yeah, I was a classical pianist. What? And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I did that when I was younger. Uh, when I got into school, I was in band and then orchestra. Um, and then, yeah, my when I, when I got into eighth grade, my mom said, you got to start playing sports. So, um, yeah, my sisters, they were both very athletic growing up. He, um, yeah. They ran cross country, played basketball, played volleyball. They they did sports. And um, so when it came to me, my mom was just like, OK, you, you know, I, I want the, everyone on the same schedule, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so she was like, you need to play a sport. And I was like, yeah, OK, whatever. Um, and she was like, no, seriously, you need to play a sport and yeah. you can play any sport you want. And I said, all right, then I'm going to play soccer. <laughs> soccer. Yeah. Well, okay. So right off the bat, there's two questions that I have to add here. Classical pianist. Do you still play? No, I don't. Is this something that you can pick back up? It, it would take some work. Yeah. Just because, um, the last time it's been years, um, yeah. 10 years. 12 years have, uh, ago, I tried playing again, and it was really hard for me to read music. So, okay. you know, just I had to really look at study what I was doing before I could actually put my hands on the keyboard and start playing again. So as long as <laughs> as long as I don't have to read music, I think I'm pretty good. But wow. how are you going to play if you don't read music? It was, that is just amazing. So I have another question that popped up and I'm going to ask it when we start talking to athlete Kelsey. So before we start talking to athlete Kelsey, I'm going to ask you a few questions and you give us the underlying story. So is this statement true? If you tickle me, I'm not responsible for your injuries. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. So tell, tell me about this. I am very ticklish. Um, when I was a lot, when I was younger, it was even more so. But um, I, I don't get massages because I can't have someone touching me, mm -hmm. and it's really hard for me to get a pedicure because the bottom of my feet are so <laughs> sensitive. Um, and when we were younger, my sisters would just like, just tickle me, just go in and yeah <laughs> and yeah so so we used to have like tickle fights <laughs> oh my god it's funny the reason i had to bring this up is because i am ticklish too like you can pretend you're tickling me like just like pretend like in the air and like i yeah. start laughing yeah <laughs> and so right now i'm in a rehabilitation state you know my uh, achilles tendon and part of my physical therapy i have to get a massage and this is the first time in my life that I'm getting a massage. And like when I first started, like they would literally take my shoe off and I would just be laughing. I'm, <laughs> I was that guy. Uh, yeah. They, they've told me how to think. So I'm at the point now to where I can kind of get the massage on the one ankle. That is it. Mm -hmm. Like you start massaging my calf, like I'm gone again. So yeah. I'm right there so, with you. And actually, um, I don't know if it's just my mom, but um, I am okay with my mom, you know, massaging me. I love really? it when she rubs my calves. She okay. used to do that a lot when I was younger. <laughs> um, so I can, I don't like massages, but yeah. if my mom rubs on my legs, that is amazing. Okay. <laughs> All right. One more question before we move on. What is the largest watermelon that you have ever purchased? <laughs> <laughs> so they grow them big here in Oklahoma. 
Um, <laughs> they're actually in Rush Springs, which is like central Oklahoma, there's a watermelon festival. It, it, it's really crazy. And I know I bought a massive one and I think it was just from the farmer's market. I put yeah. it on the scale. It was probably over 20 pounds, but it, yeah, it was massive. And I don't know if I even finished it, but I was just like, I, I love watermelon. So why not? <laughs> on your Instagram, it shows the scale at 64 pounds. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. Do you remember the price of the watermelon? I think it was like $10. It what? Was oh my God. <laughs> All right, well, now we have a better understanding of everyday Kelsey, so let's break contact with her, and we're going to talk with Kelsey, the athlete. Before we continue, can you please give us your Instagram handle so we can follow and support you? Uh, so on Instagram, I am long, comma, Kelsey, so it's just one word. Okay. Your Instagram is jam-packed with so much positivity. There's yoga, cycling, lifting, and running. And you've alluded to this earlier. You started off in soccer. And do you did you enjoy this when you started out? Did you know how to play the game? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like I said, it was something my mom told me I had to do. So, yeah. um, to, it, it was a my rebellion to my mom since she made me join sports was okay. I'm gonna choose the sport you know nothing about. Wow. There you <laughs> so go. That's, that's how I rebel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So I gave my go at soccer one time. Uh, my first year in college was at Amherst University, and um, I was horrible at it. Uh, I was just this boy from the reservation, and you know, on a reservation, it's basketball. And so I was one of those people who just could not grasp the concept of don't use your hands. I just, I, I, I don't know how else to put it. I couldn't not do it. So yeah, I was very horrible at it. <laughs> Well, and another thing is I had tried basketball and I don't have hand-eye coordination. Um, okay. So that didn't really work for me. And I actually am pretty good with my feet. Really? Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, but I, I, I had the heart, the dedication to the team, but yeah. I just wasn't as athletically inclined as other people were, you know, people who had been playing for since they were kids. <laughs> Yeah. And um, <laughs> do you hear my cats? Yeah. <laughs> Kelsey. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I'm crazy. <laughs> Are they male or female cats? One of each. Okay. Yeah. But Kelsey's yeah, so is fighting me out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're, the older one doesn't like the younger one. So okay. anytime, you know, Bluey comes around, Russ is just like always on. So oh, okay. <sighs> They're a handful. <laughs> so um, I'm fairly new to cycling. Now I see that you do a little bit of cycling as well. Can you kind of give me some ex uh, your experience on that? Showing you my new jersey. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a bike ride before this, so it's like, oh, yeah, okay. bike stuff. <laughs> so, so tell me about your experience with uh, cycling. Um, so actually, it ha I started a couple years ago. I had friends in central Oklahoma who were runners, and they told me about this race. It's called Hotter and Hell 100. Okay. And it's, it's a, a big bike race in Wichita Falls, Texas. And they said, well, they have a trail race. You should try it. And I said, okay, I'll sign up for the trail race. And they yeah. said, well, you're out there. Why don't you try a bike too? I was like, I haven't rid ridden a bike since I was a kid. Yeah. So they're like, you can borrow mine. So a friend of mine lent me her bike a week before the race and said, you know, you, you run, you're, you're fine. Yeah. It was not fine. Nope. <laughs> Okay. It was hard, and I didn't have bike shorts. I didn't have like I was just not prepared. Yeah. I did. Okay. It was fun, but I I just really wasn't prepared for what I what was coming. But I really liked it. Yeah. So I returned my friend's bike, <laughs> and I bought one of my own. Okay. What kind of bike you got? So it is a Mossy M A S I. Okay. I think is okay. how you pronounce it. And um, 
it's something that I just I I wanted to get into more, but I haven't had the time just because I'm going into longer distances now, so it's a little yeah. harder to get a uh, quality time on the bike. But every once in a while, I'll join a bike race or something, just okay. something 25 miles or less, I think is where I'm good. Okay. Is, is 25 miles, is that long to you? Um, yes and no. Okay. So as far as time, it doesn't take as long as like running 25 miles, <laughs> yeah. but it is a long time to sit on a seat. Oh yeah. That you hurts. Know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm brand new. Well, I'm fairly new. I'm going to say that to the whole cycling game. I have a bike and I call it Frankenstein. He's right in the back right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I call him Frankenstein. Uh, I bought him from my wife's coworker and he has a bunch of random parts on it now. And I use Amazon to outfit it so I can, I guess, ride long rides and everything. And for yeah. me right now, 15 miles is long. Uh, it is pretty tough. And I got him a decal. The other Aww, day, so. I like yeah. it. <laughs> so that's going on him. Um, but what yeah, kind I, of bike is it? Uh, a Cannondale Quick. But oh, okay. um, it's it's a uh, it's a road bike, but it doesn't have the aero bars. Well, it does now because uh, thank you, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a road bike too. <clears throat> okay. And I went to a bike race in Stillwater uh, last month. And it was a gravel race. And so, like, now I'm just like, oh, I need a gravel bike. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to, I mean, I'm I'm gearing towards buying a new one. But it, I had to see if this is something that I actually wanted to invest in first. And now that I yeah. know, yes, it is something I want to invest in. But um, the one I was looking at is like a Fuji. I don't get me lying to you about the model. But it was a transition bike, I think, is what they try to sell it as. Mm -hmm. uh, gra gravel and road uh, I think he's gonna switch out the tires or something but yeah I'm in that limbo state right now of like what am I gonna do next you know yeah <clears throat> you know uh, some of the things for me as a new cyclist I had this conversation with a few other people and it's about bike pedals do you have the bike pedals that clip in or no I want them you want them I do okay I t oh I, I don't want them no <laughs> no so oh man like like i told you amazon is the one that's out fitness bike so i got the pedals with the straps on it i'm like all right i think i'll transition into it yeah so that's where i'm at right now i totally forgot and i was coming up on a four-way with no stop signs and a car was coming so i was like all right i gotta turn a little bit and then i'll you know take my foot out nope they were in there and I was in the ditch. And, oh. Yeah. And there was, it was right next to a little league baseball game or something. And so like, I'm like on the bike, but I'm like on the ground. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, yeah. this is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. I was really against the um, clip-ins in the beginning yeah. just because I knew like I, that could happen. I just fall over on my bike. Yeah. But I, I just... I don't, maybe it's because I'm tiny or I just feel like I don't get enough power just pedaling. And I know that you have more power if you're clipped in yeah. um, and, and you can just, you, you, you ride, you can do that a little bit easier. So I've heard that and I'd like to try it. The only thing that is keeping me from doing it is I don't have a local bike shop. So oh, okay. um, I want to try on shoes. I have wide feet. Yeah. So I want to try on shoes to make sure I'm getting the right ones because I've also read that bike shoes, those clip-in shoes, they they run a little narrow. So oh, okay. I need to make sure I get the right size. Yeah. Well, we're right there together. So I guess, uh, I mean, I've already wrecked once, you know, it is what it is. So yeah. <laughs> Got to get back on and do it again. So maybe I'll transition up to the uh, clip-ins eventually and everything. But, you know, I, I realize, you know, through this whole rehab process that I'm going through right now, that um, bike riding is something that I enjoy. So I'm kind mm -hmm. of thinking about trying a uh, triathlon eventually one of these days. But, uh, I'm going to start the small one, of course. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, hey, let's talk about yoga. And personally, for me, of all the things, all the sports that you do, yoga for me is the most difficult. Tell me about your experience with it. I, I kind of think of, you know, Kelsey as an athlete starting when I was living in Chickasha and I decided, 
you know, I'm going to try something new. I started working with a personal trainer and I got really into Olympic lifting. Oh, and wow. that was something like I was like, I wanted to compete. I wanted to do something with that. And yeah. I knew that you have to be really uh, work on your mobility with Olympic lifting because you're doing all of these, um, you know, movements and with heavy weight. So that's when I really got into yoga, just pairing those thing, two things together, the yeah. lifting and the yoga. So um, I think it was really beneficial for me. And then I transitioned more into running, so um, less lifting and okay. tried to keep up the yoga. Um, I'm not doing so well here in, like, as far <laughs> as a practice. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll do my mobility um, that my coach tells me to do, but yeah. as far as like going to classes and everything like I used to in central Oklahoma, that doesn't yeah. happen as much anymore. Um, and I really miss that because that was so much fun was just being in that group and, and, and working, um, together. Okay. So through my research, yoga is, uh, great for increasing your range of motion, uh, mm -hmm. strength, strengthening your balance and, uh, stability, which are all great keys to running. Has yoga benefited your running? Yes. Um, and I can, I know that because when I was doing it all the time, I yeah. didn't have any problems with like, you know, aches and pains or anything like that. Yeah. And now that I am, you know, kind of doing it as I have to, um, yeah. you know, whenever it's prescribed by my coach, there are times that I miss um those workouts i realized that it is, it affects my plantar fasciitis oh okay so i can say yes yoga really helps because now i have plantar fasciitis <laughs> <clears throat> do you have any favorite poses and which are the most difficult poses for you i love balance poses okay yeah i love being um you know just you just trying to find that um, place where you can, you know, let everything out and you're just balancing and, um, you know, moving your body the same and challenging your body. Um, there is one that I had tried for years. Um, that was I'm trying to think of the name of it, but basically you're on one leg, you have your arms connect. So you reach down underneath one of your legs and you connect your hands behind, okay. connect, you know, and then you yeah. bring your other leg up and it's, you know, all the way up. So it's oh, really man. fun to try. <laughs> um, and then also balancing on your hands. I think it's crow where okay. you're on your hands and you're just leaning forward and your knees are on your elbows. So your hands are the only thing holding you up. Oh, okay. Now, just all of what you just said just sounds hard already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so I used to do these uh, insanity workout videos, you know, uh, and it had Sean T and, you know, the whole group behind them. Well, it, it would come to these sections where they had yoga or they had yoga discs. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, those yoga sections would just demoralize me. I my joints, my muscles, they're just too stiff for all of that. And I would literally break a sweat faster doing yoga than I would do in the actual HIIT workouts and everything. Yeah, they get pretty intense. <sighs> There's a meme and it shows the Tim, Tin Man and he's like in a yoga class and he's like, this is bullshit. <laughs> 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 that <Yeah>. is me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you, talk, you talked about Olympic lifting. How long have you done that? How long have you been away from it? And do you have plans to move back into that? Um, so I started maybe in 2015 is what I'm thinking. Okay. And I have kind of been away from it since I moved down here to southeastern Oklahoma, just because when I lived in central Oklahoma, we had an amazing gym and they had the, you know, the right equipment that I needed yeah. and it was accessible when I needed it. Um, since I've been here in southeastern Oklahoma we I do have a gym we have the equipment but that is all there's always a CrossFit class going on oh, so okay. when there's CrossFit you can't use that equipment yeah. and you know 
CrossFit, CrossFit's cool, but I really just want to do Olympic lifting. So it's really hard <laughs> yeah. to be able to get access to that. Um, I understand. But yes, I would love to go back to it because, oh my goodness, I it's so beautiful to watch and to to see your body doing these things because um, you know I'm I'm little and I never really thought like I could do. It was hard to see how strong I was, and and that yeah. was a great measurement. Is you know well. I just can throw this weight over my head, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of videos on your Instagram and everything, and you were putting up some good weight there. You know, <laughs> that is pretty awesome because I've tried to get into it before. Again, what stopped me was my mobility. Mm. I, I, my shoulders, I just don't move. You know, a, a certain way. I don't. My ergonomics are probably bad. You know, I just don't know how to do it and everything. But what you were doing that's pretty amazing. Thanks. Have you ever had an accident or dropped the weight or anything? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked with a coach um, early on. And yeah. um, so actually, so my first official training with this coach, it is you, you have the uh, barbell on your back and you have weights. And it's a, I think it's a drop snatch. So. Okay. You're here, and what you need to do is kind of just push yourself up, uh, let your knees go, and then when you're coming up that momentum, you yeah. drop under the bar into oh, okay. a squat. So, and then from your squat, you're in an overhead squat, and you just stand up. So okay. that is the exercise, and it's meant to be a warm up. It's not your whole workout. Oh wow. <laughs> and I, I had the weight on my shoulders and I'm pretty new. I knew and my mobility wasn't there. And I'm just like, coach, I don't think I, I don't think this is a good idea. I think this is too heavy. He was like, no, you got it. You got it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay. And so like, and I think I just second guessed myself at the last minute. So I dropped down and then I just straight forward. <laughs> and the, 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 the plates are big enough so that you, you don't, you know, the bar doesn't fall on you yeah. but yeah it was just whoosh, straight oh, on my wow. face <laughs> you know that is unfortunate that that happened but you don't know what you can do until you try right yeah exactly. so that is one of my favorite exercises now because i'm like i can rock this <laughs> oh yeah definitely okay kelsey so there are an infinite number of reasons that people in general begin their respective running journeys and throughout their running careers, sometimes those reasons change. Kelsey, give us your story of how your running journey began and how it's become such a major part of your identity. Um, I mean, I, I, I've always been really competitive, um, just wanting to be the best. And so starting when I was running, I was just like, well, yeah, I'm going to be fast. I'm going to, I'm going to beat these people. And so I would enter all of these races and always try to beat the person in front of me. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I did is I, I wanted to collect medals and actually I have a wall of medals that I, oh, wow. uh, from all the races I've done. Yeah. Um, and like that was it for me. Um, yeah. and then, uh, about three years ago or so, I found out about Jordan Daniel, okay. um, you know, from Rising Hearts and just seeing all the work that she's doing. And, you know, this was something that I wanted, like, I wanted to advocate for my people, but I didn't know how to because I don't live in a huge area. I don't, um, I don't know a lot of people in my yeah. area who do this sort of thing, but what she was doing was using her platform as her running platform to advocate for um, uh, indigenous causes. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. I was like, you're, you're doing something right where you are and not trying to uh, overcomplicate it or, or be yeah. too big, you know? You're right. So I was inspired by that. And so that's what, I started to do. I had uh, started to partner with companies as a brand ambassador, and okay. you know, I 
didn't have a whole a huge following and I still don't even have a huge following now but um you know just using those connections that I had to uh and what my purpose was was to hopefully educate them because uh the I was a a brand ambassador and um a lot of these spaces were you know white spaces that didn't know what was going on in our communities Right. So that's when I really started um, working and uh, Jordan created a team, the running with purpose team. So I applied and I got in. So I was really happy to be able to be a part of this team because we all ha- are working, have, you know, we are doing something. We use our bodies, our, our um, platforms, you know, to for advocacy. Yeah. And um, it's just so nice to be a part of this group because we, we have calls with each other and we're able to um, encourage each other and figure out, you know, if, if I'm having a problem with something that I don't know how to deal with, I can bring it to the group and they can be yeah. like, well, you know, this is how you can approach this. That is awesome. And that is the uh, Rising Hearts Running with Purpose team with uh, Jordan Daniels. And they're, that is the one where they're using running the running platform as a call for action? Yes. That is awesome. You're also a part of the Renew Earth running team. Yes. T- tell Legs us about, going back. There you go. Tell <laughs> us about this. How did you get involved? So um, I didn't know it at the time, but... Uh, you know, Jordan and Michael, Michael is the founder of the Renew Earth Running team. Um, they they were friends and they have worked together on boards with each other. Um, but the the purpose of that team, that their their mission really spoke to me as well because you know, I, I believe that protecting indigenous peoples really comes down to protecting the environment. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, what we do with the earth um, really is really good, translates to how we treat people. And as um, in North America, all of this land was indigenous land. Yeah, you know, definitely. People came and took that and, and renamed it and, and took it as their own. But this was all indigenous land. And so um, you have indigenous knowledge that cared for this land. And, and we're seeing that, you know, there there's so many problems with the environment because of uh, capitalism, commercialism, yeah. you know, just there's the, the environment is being destroyed to, for a, a monetary purpose. Yes. And if we were to go back and ask the people indigenous to that land how to care for it, we can probably make a difference and you know just keep the earth here a little bit longer yeah so um and that's what we're trying to do we raise awareness we raise funds and um making sure that indigenous peoples are the ones who make decisions for the land here there you go hashtag legs for land back yes (laughs) and you're also a member of the rad rabbit team yes For all the listeners out there, RAD stands for Runners and Dreamers. And the uh, Rabbit team has assembled a team of diverse runners uh, that share the same passion. And it's comprised of athletes of all different ability levels and ages. And that's that's what drew me drew me to the team was the name runners and dreamers because i am at the back of the pack you know now that i am not chasing a pr chasing dq Mm -hmm. i just run for fun i run for me i run for um awareness you know it's not to be the fastest or to win medals or anything like that so i am a runner and a dreamer yeah, basically <laughs> and so i felt like this team fit and i i liked that the company was started by two women you know i thought that was yeah. amazing to have women founders <clears throat> and they make pretty cool clothes <laughs> also so i'm a part of this team as well and during indigenous people's day they asked us how we plan to celebrate that day And I believe that that was also uh, spearheaded by Jordan as well. Yes. Yes. At the time, she was a rabbit elite. Right. And so you 
ran a trifecta put on by Rising Hearts. Tell us about that. Yeah, so w Rising Hearts will do virtual runs um, uh, and there is one coming up this, uh, next month. And so they will have a fundraiser and uh, so with the trifecta is a 5K, 10K and half marathon um, running okay. those distances within a week or oh, uh, wow. like seven to 10 days. I'm not exactly sure the, the exact time span, but something like that. And so I, I can't even remember when I started, but whenever they, these come up, I always sign up for the trifecta yeah. because I think it's just so cool to challenge yourself. Um, when you register for each distance, you donate to a specific cause. Um, okay. So there are four nonprofits, I believe, that you are able to support through your choosing, registering for a certain distance. Okay. When they asked us how we're going to celebrate this, you know, during that time, for me and my family, we read a newspaper article. Um, it was of my grandfather who got his war shirt stolen. Uh, the war shirt itself was over 200 years old before it was stolen. Now, I was just young when this happened, um, but I remember living this whole issue. I remember it so vividly. So just living that, it was hard. But reading this article years later, it brought back that helpless and somber feeling that was just over my whole family during that time. Mm -hmm. the in the incident does have a happy ending. The FBI was able to recover the shirt and get it back to my grandfather. But, you know, like I said, my mom, she preserved this newspaper article and um, she finally gave it to me. So for years, I've been trying to read it and I would only get so far into it and I would just break down and cry. I would in my mind, I was like reliving that stuff. So I never really got to finish it. So on Indigenous Peoples Day, we celebrated by reading it as a family and basically forcing our way through the tears to, you know, read the whole article and finally get that closure that I know I've been needing. Uh, and then I used it as a teaching point for my daughters to teach them about our Blackfeet her heritage. Uh, and on top of that, um, I got to relieve some stress by running. <laughs> <laughs> but before we move on from the Red Rabbits, um, we received a Rad Rabbits running kit, and it had uh, a shirt, a buff, water bottle, some socks, and a Boko hat. Yeah, you had beadwork on yours. Yeah, I did, did you, it. You did it yourself. I did it. Yeah. Oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> that was my first hat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for anybody out there who this was the hat, but her. Oh, here we go. <laughs> There it is. Yeah. So here's how it looks without beadwork. And there it is with the beadwork. That's yeah. amazing. I love that. Thanks. I went to the store and I, um, well, I brought my hat too. Yeah. And I matched so I could get all the right colors for the team. Yeah. And put it on the design. That's awesome. <laughs> do you still rock that thing? I do. It's one of my favorites. Um, just because like I love uh, being on the Rad Rabbit team. <clears throat> yeah. You know, when uh, representing out at races that I'm at. And um, also it shows like I'm an indigenous runner. You yeah. know, it's it's one another way to, to show that because, um, I, you know, I don't I, I would love to wear like a ribbon skirt because I've seen some people run in them. But I'm also really particular about, yeah. you know, what things are on me. Yeah, <laughs> so this is one way to to represent yeah, that is awesome. You know, I, I, I love this team. This is my second year on and yeah. um, I owe it you too. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. I, I love this team. They're so very supportive and I think I owe them some miles. I haven't been able to run this year, but my first miles in this year, I'm definitely going to uh, dedicate it to this team. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the last team that you are a part of is the Dirtbag Run Team and can you tell me all, I'm gonna let you take the lead. You do you, let us know about this. Okay, so um, Dirt Bags Run. It comes from the Dirt Bag Runners community. Um, okay. uh, it's uh, on Instagram, just at Dirt Bag Runners. And so I met my business partner, Rebecca, through Dirt Bag Runners. 
and we both became a part of the social media team. So we're the ones who are posting on that Instagram or, oh, okay. you know, char in charge of finding things to post there. Yeah. And Rebecca and I just like really got on well. And one thing that Rebecca was, uh, one of her responsibilities was having, uh, it was called trail talk. So it was like kind of a, a, a session where not exactly like a podcast, it was, but something similar to that, but through okay. with an Instagram live. So you go oh, live okay. on Instagram, you talk to guests and, and so she invited me on one where we talked to uh, so, uh, a cyclist who started the Major Knox Adventures okay. um, uh, Instagram page and the Major Knox team. So, you know, we met people there and then we met some other people through another discussion about diversity, equity in and inclusion in trail running. And so after that, that, that um, DEI talk, Rebecca and I, we, we text a lot. We were texting like, you know, we really got to do something. Yeah. So that's how Dirt Bags Run came along. Oh, is wow. like we needed to do something. So we created a team. Yeah. And it wasn't just any team because, you know, um, that we, we anyone could have done that. But we wanted to specifically create a team for runners of color, black, indigenous and people of color and wow. um, only runners of color. So oh, we love wow. our allies. Yeah. But this is something that we we wanted to make sure that the running community knew about us. Yeah, um, and knew that like we are good athletes. We we are we can do these hard things. Um, and it yeah. isn't, you know, um, the <laughs> it, it 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 isn't a sport for just white men that yeah. it, it's shown to be in media and um, elsewhere. Right. Totally understand. So, uh, do you have the team already chosen, or what? what what uh, stage are we in right now? So we close our extended application deadline today. Um, oh, wow. We, yeah, we closed the um, regular uh, distances last Wednesday and okay. we extended for a hundred mile applications to today. Oh, so wow. we're hoping to choose our team some, sometime soon. So we're doing that application review. Oh, wow. Good luck to everybody who applied for that. So, and yeah. what, uh, go ahead. Oh, so, uh, I mean, what being on the team means isn't, you know, just saying, Hey, I'm a, I'm a dirt bag. Um, <laughs> it is also yeah. means that <laughs> it also means that we are going to bring you, or we're hoping to bring, um, 20 runners and that's including the core team. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, we're going to bring them to a race in Glen Rose, Texas. And what we want to do is we want to cover registration. We want to cover hotels for each runner to have a room for two days, travel wow. from the Dallas metro area and food for that weekend. So we want to make sure that all of that is taken care of to, to get rid of any obstacle that yeah. a um, th that comes to runners of color because, you know, sometimes that obstacle is financial. Sometimes oh, yeah. that obstacle is a community. So, you know, by choosing this team early on, we're of course giving them time to train for their race, yeah. but also to know each other because we're going to have weekly, not weekly, monthly check-ins. <laughs> and so yeah. that they can talk to each other and, and really um, know each other before we're all just together in November. Wow. What what run is this that you guys are going to? So it is the Dinosaur Valley Endurance Run. Oh, okay. I love that one. Yeah, um, I'm really excited. That is awesome. How many uh how many applicants did you get overall? Do you do you know that number off the top of your head? Um we had about thirty. And okay. we we're, we're choosing 15 from the applications because uh, there's going to be 20 on the team, but okay. we have five core team members. Five who, core, okay. You know, we're, yeah. we're good on the team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, did you guys meet your uh, financial goals already? 
No, we are still in the process of getting all of our uh, sponsorships together. Okay. We, but yeah, we are really excited to have partnered with two really great companies who are right. helping us out a lot. That's great. Well, if uh, luck has it, I might be able to be at that run this year. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be an uh, actual participant. I'm kind of going on the limb of like, I, I would like to get some footage. I would like to get back into the trails and maybe even pace some people and everything. So, Ooh, yeah. So if, uh, if I see y'all there, we'll definitely do something. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's move into some warm up questions before we get into the five to stay alive. So for your warm up questions, I'm going to ask you some office trivia questions. So if you get a majority of them right, I'm going to make you a Dundee. Better yet, a a Rundy. <laughs> I love Hold that. on. Did <laughs> did I Yes, I think I just had an idea. A Rundy. Oh my god. Okay. Here we go. Get a majority of them right. There are five of them here. So question number one. According to Prison Mike, what is the worst thing about prison? <laughs> The Dementors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and it hoit. It hoit. All right. <laughs> Question number two. When Michael is having lunch with the insurance salesman, whom they think is a part of the mob, what dish does Michael try to order? <laughs> The gobble-ghoul. The gobble-ghoul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> All right. Question number three. What is the name of Pam, Toby, and Oscar's club? The Finer Things Club. The Finer Things Club. Oh, my God. <laughs> All I right. I tried to create a Finer Things Club at work. Yeah? At work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, hold on. You already won. However, I want to ask the rest of these just because it's so much fun. So question number four, finish Dwight's security code. The T in Nepal is very hot. Oh, the, I know the word that he messes up, but I can't remember the exact phrase, but the something in somewhere is far hotter. And he says much hotter. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh, but the coffee in Peru is far hotter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. I should have let off with that one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Finish this one and bonus points for singing it. How long did Michael work at Dunder Mifflin? I think he got me that. I th I'm thinking 15 years, but I think it's over 15 years. The answer is... 9,986,000 oh! minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. When well, you said sing, I was thinking of the Oompa Loompa. Um, <laughs> that, that, uh, when Dwight, I think it was, why is he gone? He was such a nice guy. Yeah. No, he was not. He was a total douche. <laughs> Doom buddy. Doom buddy. Doom. Doom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, before we move into the five to stay alive, is there anything you want to go back, touch on before we move on? No. And now it's time for the five to stay alive. These are the questions that I ask every guest about themselves and what keeps them going. Contestant Kelsey, are you ready to answer the five to stay alive? Yes. Question number one, do you run with or without music? And if so, what is one power song on your running playlist that motivates you? So, on the treadmill, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and let me see. I told you I love the Hamilton soundtrack, but that's a whole soundtrack. One, another song that I really like is um, Con Calma by Daddy Yankee. Okay. <laughs> I is that, don't it, speak Spanish at all, but like okay. that really gets me going. All right, is that the song you want to add? Yeah. All right, cool. So keep in mind that this song will be added to the Spotify guest playlist for listeners to download. And this song is a representation of you. Everybody out there in podcast land, you can go to the Run True Diary Spotify guest page and download the guest playlist. 
Question number two. What are some things in your life that have positively changed since you started running? I think, you know, just being more introspective, just running gives me a lot of time to think. Yeah. Um, I can be very impulsive and just like act. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, just uh, thinking about you know, how I'm going to handle situations, difficult situations, especially that I have to, um, you know, do, do with rap right. work and whatnot, so. Okay. Question number three, in your opinion, what is one thing that an athlete should avoid in their journey to becoming a better runner? Um, I would say like restrictive dieting. Okay. Um, I am all about eating uh, because, <laughs> mainly because I have, it, I get, I used to get so busy and I just wouldn't make time to eat and I could see my performance go down. And, um, so I know, you know, got to eat your breakfast, got to eat your dinner. Right. Speaking of dieting, to my understanding, you're a vegan, vegan, vegetarian, vegan, vegetarian. I, I don't know what the difference is. Can you explain uh, the difference for us that don't know? Yeah. So I definitely do not eat any sort of meat. Okay. But um, the difference between vegan and vegetarian is the uh, uh, animal products like eggs, milk, okay. um, those sorts of things. Vegetarians will eat them. Vegans will not. Okay. Um, you know, being here in central Oklahoma, it has gotten a lot harder to stay a strict vegan. So, um, it, you know, it just more for convenience, I okay. have started eating more as a vegetarian. Okay, I understand. And do you find that that helps you recover faster? Um, do you think it helps with the running uh, physique as a runner? I think so. Um, I have never... I. Aside from the fact that when I don't eat or didn't yeah. eat, um, you know, I never felt depleted or I never felt like I, it, it wasn't enough. And, you know, just making sure that you're getting the right amounts and that you're eating right is something to pay attention to, um, yeah. you know, especially it, it's so easy to have the processed meats, you know, yes. that's uh, fake meats. It's so easy to do something like that, but um, I think my body just works better when I avoid those. I totally understand. And I personally have start, started eating plant-based and everything. Uh, and it started at the beginning of this whole uh, injury that I had and everything. So it, I feel it's been working for me. I'm anxious to pair this with running to see how well that works together. Yeah. Question number four, finish this statement. When it comes to long distance running, Kelsey cannot leave the house without her. I would say, and it's kind of, they, they pair together, my okay. watch and my phone. Okay. Because, you know, I, I run alone, so um, I need my phone for safety. And, you yeah. know, my watch has that, you know, if you're in trouble, click here sort of thing. But yeah. it only works if your phone is close. So I have to have both of them. I totally understand. <laughs> Uh, which team are you when it comes to watches? Garmin. There you go, Team Garmin. <laughs> Question number five. Do you have a running, workout, or life mantra? Yes. Um, so something that I will repeat to myself, especially in the longer distances, is to run the mile you're in. Um, it's so overwhelming to you know, running a marathon, especially if you're hurt or if something's starting to bother you. Um, for me, a lot of the time, because uh, it may be a blister, just like something really little, but it's just like, yeah. oh, that's that's annoying. I don't want that there. Right. Um, you know, those things can take over and, and mentally defeat you, but just running the mile you're in because, you know, when you break it down, you're like, okay, I'm at point three. Okay, now I'm at point five, you know, just taking it in those yeah. small little increments. And you're just like, okay, well, this one's done now. And I've completed, you know, 20 miles just doing this, taking it just one mile at a time. And you're just yeah. like, I only have a 10K left. <laughs> <laughs> there you go.
Well, thank you for answering the five to stay alive. Those are all the questions that I have for this conversation. Is there anything you'd like to say, add, or revisit before we bring this episode to a close? Um, no. Okay. Well, Kelsey, thank you for agreeing to be a guest on the show. Your tenacity to continually strive for success is that to be admired. Your willingness to generate ideas and take action to bring them to life teaches us that we too must act, experiment, fail, adapt, and learn on a daily basis. That even big ideas have small beginnings. So on behalf of the running community, I want to thank you for creating room for all of us at the starting line. So again, Kelsey, thank you. It was definitely an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. Definitely welcome. And you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you out there in the trails. We're approaching a finish line, but before we cross, here's some news and views. That was Kelsey Long. And as I mentioned before, she has a strength of presence that positively influences the people around her. Kelsey's positive movement within the running community is already amazing, and she's just getting started. I want to summarize a few points of our conversation. Here's Kelsey. So since you were not uh, raised tra in a traditional sense as a, I guess, indigenous person, what is your take on having an Indian as a high school mascot or sporting team? I don't think it's a good idea. Um, it's just, I feel like it is damaging to native peoples, indigenous peoples. Um, like I said, I wasn't raised traditionally. I believe that is because my mom was uh, in a boarding school when she was younger. And so she was raised by nuns and her culture was forbidden. And I feel, and so I was raised in the Southern Baptist Church. And um, so we didn't get to know the culture part of it. Yes, we knew we're in Navajo. We knew some words because both of my parents speak fluently and they would like say, pass the salt, you know? So we yeah. knew something like that. And okay. we knew who we were, but we just didn't know how to represent or present ourselves to the world as indigenous people because it felt like we weren't allowed to. Right. And so seeing that these, uh, Seeing that schools, um, sporting teams are using mass uh, indigenous mascots, they say they're honoring, that's not honor. What I hope that my work does is empowers younger generations, especially my niece and nephews, to proudly be themselves. About three years ago or so, I found out about Jordan Daniel, you know, from Rising Hearts and just seeing all the work that she's doing. I'm an indigenous runner, yeah, so this is one way to represent. And, you know, this was something that, like, I wanted to advocate for my people, but I didn't know how to because you're doing something right where you are and not trying to uh, overcomplicate it or, or be yeah. too big. So I was inspired by that. And so that's what I started to do, partner with companies as a brand ambassador, you know, just using those connections that I had to hopefully educate them. As runners, we have diverse backgrounds, stories, and journeys. Kelsey's journey is positive, motivating, and has us all rooting for her. From buying gigantic watermelons and knowing her office trivia, to creating a positive workplace for her employees at work and BIPOC runners in our running community, she is doing amazing. We're super proud of you, Kelsey. Keep up the great work. Keep moving, keep improving, and I'll see you out there in the trails. Next, I remember listening to the original back in 1992 on cassette tape. Kelsey is adding Gon Goma by Daddy Yankee to the Run Shoot Diary Spotify guest playlist. It's an up-tempo reggaeton dancehall song that'll get you moving. Kelsey's journey has inspired me because she's putting in the hard work for us all and doing ambassadorships the right way. So in recognition of the positive atmospheres created by Kelsey, I'm adding Hero by Weezer. And that brings a Spotify guest playlist to 20 songs. Download and enjoy. And with that, we have crossed the finish line. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or guest recommendations, contact me at runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Again, that is runshoe.diaries at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Keyword search, Runshoe Diaries. Thank you for listening to the Run Shoe Diaries podcast, episode 14 with Kelsey Long. Until next time, remember that with each step comes the decision to take another. So keep putting one foot in front of the other because it's amazing what you can do on your own two feet and I'm out.